call the meeting to order for the day. First item on our agenda is approval of today's agenda, and we do have uh, several agenda additions. Uh, approve approval of uh, to accept emergency management performance grant. Uh, discussion of procurement <coughs> process by social services. Approval of agreement with Clay County Collaborative for public health to receive five thousand to support physical and mental health needs of children and their families and approval of service agreement with Southeast Human Service Center for Payment for Detox Services. Move to approve the agenda with addition. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All same sign, motion carries. Citizens to be heard, any citizens that would like to be heard on items that are not on today's agenda. Seeing none, approve payment of bills and vouchers. Move to approve, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. Motion carries. And uh, our first item will be changed as the county attorney's office uh, are unable to be here for their so, uh, issue today. So we'll move uh, the 1005 item up, 2016 budget process update. Brian Melton and Lori Johnson. Brian Bird. Brian Bryant, Brian, Brian, Brian Berg. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that doesn't bode well for you. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Today, does it? Well, can't remember your name, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so much for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. And what's the retirement date? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like probation is still in order. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm good at numbers here. <laughs> All right, Lori. <laughs> Why don't we go through the memo? I've got a bunch of other handouts here. Uh, and, but we'll just go through the, well, maybe I better start here first. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. And, Good morning. And, uh, and my name is Brian Burke. <laughs> <laughs> and members of the commission. Well, you're starting out in a good mood today anyway. That's a positive sign. Uh, maybe after we get done with this short budget presentation, the mood won't be quite as, as joyous, but we've got a lot of work to do yet, or you folks do, and, and with, with hopefully with our help. Um, the, we'll just run through this memo, because uh, it's pretty brief and needs a little bit of explanation, and then we're going to hand out some summaries, and then we're going to go over some, uh, some of our, uh, our budgets, your budget, uh, the administrator's budget, and the... Uh, veterans budget um, because we put that together this year uh, it's pretty small but anyway just to give you an update on the new requests um, you have received this before motor vehicle is asking for a full-time uh, position out there county attorney's office we were hoping uh, uh, mr. Melton would be here this morning to review this but he will be be back I assure you that he he's asking for an additional office support, and would that be the right classification, yes, Denny? Yes, correct. And then the Sheriff's Office, he did present his budget. They're asking for that, that uh, Streets Crimes Unit person. And uh, as you discussed with him, uh, it sounded like Matt would be taking that 55,000 in equipment and, and different things will be purchased uh, from their current budget and their narcotics fund and different things. So that 55,000 came out of their budget. Uh, Corrections is asking, remember, for a half-time position and you authorized that, I think it was last meeting, because they had a half-time position in their budget for 2015 that they were gonna utilize, and you authorized a full-time position, uh, knowing that their population has just exploded on them. They were up at 46 uh, prisoners out of county uh, last week. And uh, so they're asking for that half-time position uh, for next year, plus a pretty heavy addition to the out-of-county boarding, boarding, I think it was $200,000. Yeah. 
Now we moved that out of new requests because that was the increase in the line item budget. It wasn't a new program at all. So we'll just keep reminding you that that 200,000 is now within the jail budget. It is not in the new request. So you'll see new requests go down. Um, Technology Services is asking some dollars for some overtime. They wanted to ask for a, or he was planning on asking for an additional person. And uh, we did have a discussion reference uh, when they have a busy uh, period that maybe it would be much wiser to use some overtime and get those projects caught up on. And mm -hmm. so he would like to try that. Um, Social Services is asking for a, a half-time position for out-of-home placement. Uh, dollars would be moved to the regular budget, I think, on, on that, but they're asking for an additional half-time position. Public Health is asking for a .6 position. Uh, she thought she'd asked for a full-time position when she came in and presented it to the budget. I don't recall it. Lori didn't recall it. I don't know if you folks did, so that's why we're bringing it to your attention here. Uh, and those are all county dollars. They aren't any matching dollars, so I think it'll be a point of discussion from, I'm sure, from, from you folks. Um, and family services, it was a small amount of additional dollars. They pay one dollar, I think it is per, no, they, uh, they pay a stipends of a hundred dollars a week for on-call duty and uh, they would like to see that increased a little bit. So we'll certainly be talking about those. Now the other items that are in the budget, uh, they include the 2% cost of living adjustment, the insurance increase, we still have that at $500,000 in the, in the general budget that has not been spread throughout, so that will show a, a higher um, increase in the general revenue fund. The county program aid, we have received a report on that, so that was up about $30, or 30000 sorry, $30,000 at $2,901,767. Uh, MCI dividend, you didn't have that last time we reported on that, and that's 212467 We had a zero amount in the budget last time, so that's a, that's a positive. One positive move in the right direction. So uh, jail construction, uh, we've talked about that, that we add $50,000 per year, but that is a new item, so we, we wanted to talk about that. And when we put the budget together, uh, I did place $25,000 reestablishing the unanticipated, we had taken that out last year and certainly may take it out again this year by the time we're done. So, uh, and then also something that we took out last year was the rebate dollars, that last item down below. There's $200,000 in the budget for those rebate dollars for new housing starts. And we took that out last year and said that, you know, it's a two year program that will catch itself up. So, uh, but uh, we just thought we should present as accurate and, uh, of, a, uh, of a budget as possible and, and then go from there. So um, why don't, I'll pass this out and it's the new summary for the budget. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Now, keeping in mind the items that we have just gone over, they are all reflected in this um, summary sheet. We know it's not where you will be at the... I think Kevin would be happy with the way it stands. <laughs> Jeez, I'm doing everything I can to control myself. <laughs> <laughs> but what it is, it is the requested budgets from uh, your departments that have been before you, mostly because a lot of them have re had the new requests. And if you remember right, there were some additions during the year last year, and they do compound and build to the, to the next level. So um, we will, you know, we'll have to work through that. So uh, it, as I stated earlier, a lot of those uh, dollars have been put in the general revenue fund, the $500,000 for the insurance, and that's why you'll see quite a heavy increase in the general revenue. And I do want to point out, because Rhonda keeps pointing it out as we talk about this, she really wants 
everyone to remember that this figure uh, was reduced by two hundred thousand dollars worth of reserves last year. So, in fact, it's it. She wanted to remind us that it's not a six point four eight percent increase. That that two hundred thousand uh, dollars is in that figure as well. Which um, so if that was reduced or added into it. Uh, it would not be as big of a percentage increase or one here over the other. Um, I hope I'm clear on that. So anyway, with that, any, any questions on that before we go into uh, our, our uh, budgets, the commissioner's budget, the administrator's budgets, and the veteran service budget? Uh, I think I'll, maybe I should hand out one other document though that supports it uh, or two let's do two i've got the new requests and i did run through those okay i'm going to pass that down You probably should have had this handout when you went over the new requests. But uh, last year I used a little bit of a different format, but it was kind of a duplication. This year, if, if this will coincide with that memo on the new request, it shows what dollars are being requested for the motor vehicle, uh, the uh, technology services I mentioned, the uh, overtime dollars that they wanted there, and I forgot about the um, equipment, internal service fund equipment of $15,000 that they wanted. You'll see the dollars in there for the county attorney's um, position. Uh, you'll see now that the sheriff's request is, is at 67.6, and that is just for the position, not the additional dollars. Uh, you'll see the corrections, uh, social services, public health, uh, and the family service. They said there was some small dollars, $2,400 a year for that. So that corresponds with the new request item on the memo that I handed out. So uh, I guess something for you is to study rather than analyze right now. This is probably just an update we're giving you today. So then uh, we'll hand this out as well. And what this is, is just a summary of the, uh, you, you, you received the full packet. There's certainly been some small changes to that big thick packet, but this is the, oh, two or three pages on the cover or near the front of your big thick packet. And um, what you have there is all of the different uh, departments, thank you, different departments and it, you're showing the percentage increase. And um, we'll probably refer to some of these as we go through the, the uh, budgets, the particular budgets. So if we can, want to stay on track here, so we'll, uh, we'll get started with the individual budgets. Unless there's questions, please speak up at any time. There, there's, if we want to hand these around here as well. Now this kind of will correspond to the document that I just handed out showing the percentages, the increase in budgets. Um, I guess normally you probably don't see the commissioner's budget too much in detail. You look at the percentage and it doesn't vary a great deal. This year is a little bit of an exception because if you remember right, the per diems were increased last year uh, before the end of, of the year, if you remember right and that is causing then the salary per diem line to go up a pretty good sum. And that is probably about the only increase that you saw uh, other than a small increase in the salary itself. So everything else is pretty much stable. You guys run very, very close to what has been budgeted. So you're just really kind of right on target. Um, any questions on the commissioner's budget? I don't need to just skim over it. The uh, county administrator's budget is the next item on there. So Brian, just yes, sir. The new per diems were set last January? No, last December. December, yeah. Okay, but they were set 
after we had already done the 2015 That's budget. correct. And because there was there was a, if I recall, it was a it was like a 25 percent increase. Right. Okay. Yes, it was. Yeah. Well, third and all, excuse me, about 33 percent. That would be about 33. Yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. well, no. 75 to 100. Oh yeah. But in the overall, Brian said in the overall scheme of things, it was relatively minor. Yeah. But it does increase. And we knew that. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll move on to the county administrator's uh, budget. Uh, there, the uh, entry, well, you'll see a crossed out $87,610 on there. That's just a, a correction that needs to be made. The, the Greater Fargo Moorhead Economic Development uh, was charged to that account. And of course, that has its own separate line items. That's just a error in the entry. That'll be straightened out. We run into those from time to time. Uh, but the budget there, you're seeing very little increase. Um, we we come out kind of right on the money there, and there was very little change. Maybe a couple hundred bucks here and there, but um, very little. Uh, Vicky demanded more money in the awards, but uh, so we gave it to her. We're suggesting she's that. worth it. <laughs> so, anyway, then the next one is the veteran service officer uh, budget, and as you know, you do not have a veteran service officer at this time. In fact, we interviewed for yesterday and it went well, so you'll have one hopefully on board very soon. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So we've gone through their budget and probably uh, added a few dollars uh, here and there. But uh, their budget was 195751 last year, and right now it's coming in at about $202,861. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll I, I don't know what Where's more the there is to do in that. Uh, it looks like there's a little bit in the salary line item budget. And if you remember right, there was a reclassification of Jennifer yeah. last year. Okay. So that's where you're seeing the the main increase, and then of course there's a little bit of health and para and things that go along with not the health doesn't go up because of the reclassification, but that was the change. So you'll you'll that's about the only place that there's a uh, there's a change. Um, oh, okay. Then any questions on those so far? Moving right along, if you want to go skim through this paper, that summary of the percentage change from last year to this year. And last year's budget to this year. Last year's budget to this year's budget, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so if, we, if you want to just kind of skim along down there, the court administrator's office. Now, we just budget a lump sum there. Uh, at, we don't control what the expenditures are. And um, that I increased $5,000, so you'll see a 5.88% increase because they are overexpending it. And when we do put this together, we have uh, a three or four year history that, that, and this one is just showing the one year history on it, the expenditures, actual expenditures in 2014, and then uh, the budgeted uh, for 15, and then the expected budget for the 2016. I did the same with the public uh, defender's office. We increased 5,000 there. They're running a little bit further ahead than the court administration is, but uh, that may not be enough, but it's close enough that it works out. Law library, just any dollars that come in are the dollars that they have to work with. Those are no general fund dollars. Um, and then we've talked about the county administrator's budget. and. Um, we're going to move on down probably because you've had presentations from many of these folks. And if you can go down to probably, oh, why don't we start with the library, which is about two thirds down the page. Um, now, all of these. These exclude new requests, right? This is correct. Yes, they correct. are not on this page. That's correct. 
So going back up to corrections. Yes. That that 10.61% increase is due to the um, boarding issue, right? Yes, it is. Most of it. Yeah, yes. that 200,000, the okay. majority of it anyway. All right. Yes, it is. Um, okay. We'll go down, back down and start on the library, if you want to line that over. <clears throat> that is a 2.5% increase, went to 275. You know, remember over the last years, they'd had some healthy requests for increases, and now it's leveled off. And, and uh, I think they've gotten their arms around the issues of expenditures and, and are, are doing well. Historical Society is asking for a, a modest increase of 1% that's in your budget there. Um, you, you've had your presentation from Extension. The Humane Society was flat. Uh, the Red River Basin Commission is flat as well. Um, soil conservation appropriation, uh, there's a 3% a, a increase on that. He hasn't been in yet. Yet. No, and uh, but that is their request. <coughs> I know I have a call. I would need to return to him. Uh, he said that Lori, you have talked to. Him. I haven't been about some current okay. expenditures. Well. Okay, great. Okay, so we'll, we're working with him on that. Um, public health. Now this is the request, and also when you look at your summary, I probably should have mentioned this. Uh, we have not made any adjustments to the public health reserve. And remember last year they had a pretty good influx of, of funds that increased their fund balance to the tune of about $412,000. And what we normally do is we will take that off of this year's budget, so uh, just even on your cover sheet. But we have not discussed that with public health, and Laura and I usually don't do those things unless we uh, have everybody informed of it, um, unless you so direct us to. Um, but that will, you will see a fund balance exchange of over $400,000 that will come off of the, of the limit there. Plus, we're looking at the detox budget there. They've had some refunds of $200,000 in the past, so there may be a little reduction there. So we have some room to, to work with. Um, so public health is showing a 3.34 increase, but that is uh, changed, I'll say, with the subtraction of the $400,000. But that isn't reflected in the budget of your request. That's Not yet. Yep. No. Um, the Metro Council, that is uh, Metro COG. Um, and that is a formula that, is, that they bill us for. So they give us a projected fee. That might not be the fee, but that is a projected fee for it. So that's what we put in the budget. Um, The uh, other increase there, I guess you can see, uh, we had a request from the uh, Employees uh, Appreciation Committee to increase slightly there, $250. Uh, West Central uh, Council on Aging of 3% increase. West Central Initiative has been here. Their request was the same. Um, cultural diversity had a 3% increase on there. No, this is one I want to bring to your attention. It says housing programs. The Greater Fargo-Moorhead Economic Development Commission um, had a, uh, you know, had discussed with us the fact that the rate that we pay into that hasn't been increased for a number of years, and the request has been for a hundred thousand dollars. So. Uh, that's an increase of 14%. So I guess uh, just be, be aware of that, and that's what we want to do is bring anything that may be an increase or a change to your attention today and let you think about that. Okay. Ryan, okay. sorry. Are they asking for the same uh, increase from all the different partners or just for us because it's been a while? Mr. Chair and Commissioner Mojo. I'm not sure. I know. Yeah, I I think the others have been going up. The other partners for, and like Brian said, we haven't had an increase for years and years. I I don't know when the last time there was an increase. Probably. It's I been a long time. Ten. Ten. Well, I think years ago. I think the very first year we 
did it was seventy five thousand. Oh, okay. And then I think, if I'm not mistaken, the city of Moorhead was contributing at that time. Was contributing at that time, and then. I don't know that they contribute anymore. Or they, they do. They do now again. I think they they stopped yeah. for a while. I, I don't. They stopped for a while now. They yeah. contribute okay. again. So. Okay. But but at any rate, it's been an, it's been yeah. many years. You know, yeah. they haven't asked for small increases, and, and uh, so. Thank you. I'm just wondering if if that is um, there's nothing else in that that housing program is line item, isn't it? Right. Is no, not should, anymore. Should, there should, used to be. It's not anymore. Right. Yeah. But should we? Shouldn't we just call that? What it I is. can change it yeah. now. We did have some those three, two, one housing programs. Okay. And some of the, we had those. But I wonder program. because this is this is a payment to that one entity, just like we do the other entities. Maybe right. we should switch it just to the name of the entity on the line, Anna yep. Murray. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then if we do have other housing programs, they could fall under housing programs mm -hmm. or something. But thank you. Um. The, you'll notice the unanticipated expenditure, and I brought that to your attention. County Fair Appropriations, they're uh, asking, I think, for, um, got to stop and think, I think they were 21000 well, The reason why the amount is a little bit different, they, uh, we pay them in fee plus uh, insurance. So that the insurance will vary a few dollars. So I think the fee is $21,000, and they're asking for twenty five this year, so a $4,000 increase to the county fair. Uh, looking here, Chamber of Commerce is a is a membership. Uh, Rural County Caucus, the request is still the same, 2100. Uh, senior coordinated program, uh, you know, we've had some discussions about that over the years. Uh, that was a modest increase of 4% this year. Uh, and the others get into then the budgets, the solid waste, social services, road and bridge, and you've had presentations from all of those. So do you know where they are? Why, why, is, why is planning and zoning at 12.99%? You know, I can't answer that right now because we have not met with them. We have it scheduled, I think. Yeah, we have it scheduled for Lori and I to meet with them. So. Uh, I I can't give you a accurate answer on that. The revenues are way up too, though. I'm planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it may have something to do with. I'm assuming know, it's a grant because generally there would be a, no other reason for planning to go up. But this doesn't show revenues. Yeah, it does, yeah, it does on the far left. left. The other side here. Huh? This this guy. This side. This is the revenue. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I wish I could be more specific on planning and zoning, but it's the one, one of the few agencies we have not met with yet. So. And that, Mr. Chair, kind of concludes our update. Um, and we'll certainly, um, do you want to give us any suggestions now, or we'll come back for, uh, for any direction that you want us to take a look at? Well, we'll, we'll, by the next time we come in, we will uh, talk with public health. And, that 400 and some will be applied, so that will be down another one and a half to one and three quarter percent. I'm sure we'll start to see that percentage start to drop now, so we'll get into that. Well, I'm, I'm more than sure, I'm sure, I'm sure and I'm hopeful and, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, that's kind of where it started before, uh, yeah. you know. I think we're pretty much there every year. It yeah. seems like about yeah, so that same thing. So I think this is a little higher a lot than, of fine -tuning this is a little higher than normal. We're generally yeah. in the 10 percent range. What's scary is the health health insurance, but on yeah. Thursday we can find that out. Yeah, we'll and that's the other thing. We'll know better on that. Let's hope it isn't up higher. Hopefully, 500,000 will cover it. And, mm -hmm. and, or uh, be less. Regardless, we have to pay. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Full-time participation in Metro Area Street Crimes Unit. Sheriff Berkwis and Chief Deputy Ciro. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, we are here. Uh, Going to ask for a FT for the participate in the metro area street or crimes unit. 
Uh, we have been doing it now for about three months, and I'm sure most of you know it's been very successful. And and if we don't get this position, we only currently have one Minnesota officer in there. So without that, you know, we would not have any representation from Minnesota. So hopefully that's something that we can get. Um, if it is implemented, we'd probably start testing immediately. Uh, we probably would assign one of our previous FTEs to that, so it may be back in September, in September so they can start back up. Um, <clears throat> there obviously the cost, as you can see, it's gonna be about $10,000 for the remainder of the year for the his wages which we're going to take out of the narcotics forfeiture account and as far as the equipment goes um, we do have a spare vehicle so we would not have to purchase a vehicle plus for the vehicle equipment and personnel equipment we would uh, use the narcotic buy fund account which is all the drug fines so we would definitely answer any questions or any questions for these gentlemen? Nothing more? Jenny? I just have one question and maybe it um, kind of would reflect the 2016 budget. Um, I noticed that you were able to pay, well, if this is passed, you'll be able to pay for it with that necrotics fund Correct. forfeiture. Uh, if you were addi asking additional dollars for 2016 for the equipment, is this not the equipment that you're ask you would ask for or is that separate? That would be it. That would be fifty-five thousand. Okay. This and the would bulk of that was that vehicle. Okay. And we've taken that. That's already been taken out of the budget. And I just wanted yeah. to clarify. Thank you. Oh, okay. One of the board's wishes. Well, you know, um, I want to. I don't have a question, but I certainly have a couple comments on this. And and all of us um, as commissioners, and uh, um, I think a lot of people in in general that serve in elected positions have been hearing the reports that are um, on ongoing about the um, increase in activity that's occurring and it's troubling and it's certainly not all on the other side of the river um, and that particular crime the river doesn't separate them anyway um, and oftentimes what can happen is they might be committing those crimes over here and they end up in our jails over here and over you know all that just adds up but um this is this is really a, a public safety concern when it comes to gangs and violence and um we need to do our part um in coordination of wiping this out if you want to refer to it as that and uh, it would be shameful for uh, the Minnesota side of the river to not have involvement in that. And um, I, I support this 100% and um, I hope they're successful. I agree, it goes to the heart of the public safety issue and uh, keeping our region safe and it's something we have to do, so. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I would, I would move that we uh, authorize the Sheriff's Department to immediately um, hire a full-time position for the purpose of the Metro Crimes Unit. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Well, I think it's unfortunate we have to do something like this, but I, I mean, I fully support it, but it's just uh, it is unfortunate, unfortunate that we have to uh, no question about participate that. in uh, putting on additional funds to support crime, but or take care of it or whatever. I agree, but I also am very hopeful that because we are taking the initiative to uh, staff a unit like this, that we can be successful in uh, limiting its, its future incurrence in the county. So good luck to you. Thanks. Any other comments? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. All right. Motion, mm -hmm. saying motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Brian, you want to come up quick and we'll take care of your agenda addition here? Yes, good morning. 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 Thank you. We approve uh, to accept emergency management performance grant in the amount of $31,023. Yes, um, again, we received the EMPG grant. Um, it's reduced like $2,000 this year, and the total comes with $31,023. Uh, I received the grant. I just uh, need your approval and the signature from the county administrator and the county board chairman. 
I'll move to approve the grant. Second. Motion and a second to approve the grant. Any discussion? Hearing and all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> Which was that one of these? Was that one of these? Okay. Correctional facility project presentation. Scott Fedig and Matt Keenan. Klein McCarthy Architects. And what was your name? Oh, <laughs> Brian Berg. Okay. I'm Matt now. <laughs> Good morning. I, th I thought you knew uh, Brian a little better than Matt, so I yeah. thought I'd bring him today to well, fill in. We thought we did. Yeah, we're right. <laughs> we'll find out. That, that close. Well, good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the commission again. Um, this is a really important step that we are approaching on today. Um, I, it was about two or three years ago that uh, the management retreat involves the county commissioners and gives direction to the the management team as to what the priorities are of the county and um, it involved what about 25 people and we discussed for a half a day what are the goals what are the objectives of the county what are its priorities and uh, replacing or building a new county jail rose to the top three to four well about three years ago and uh, we started the process of planning uh, this major step back then. And frankly, the um, population of the jail has just continued to grow and grow and grow. I know you have studied this project many times before. In fact, the last was in 2008, uh, very, very early in 2009. The report was issued from Klein McCarthy. So it wasn't something new, but it was revitalized by the direction of the board and after coming out of the, of the um, uh, goal setting planning session. So one of the first things that, that it occurred is, is that you folks established a committee, a financial committee, to talk about how we were going to pay for uh, a new county jail. And I know, I think you guys are up to date on that. You, you've heard enough about that. And we still have a lot of work ahead of us in regards to financing it, but we have a plan in place. And I think that is really the important, very, very important part of it. And then we moved to um, seek assistance from an architect. And um, everybody was very pleased with Klein McCarthy architect and uh, they, we went back to them to uh, revitalize this issue. And uh, you took the major step of establishing a uh, construction planning, planning construction committee, I'll say, for, for the jail and the law enforcement center. And it was a very diverse committee. And just to name a few on there. It I, is. It is? It, yeah, it, it is. Was. It was. <laughs> it was. And it is it today. Is. <laughs> Boy, this is going to be a rough day, I can tell. <laughs> you know, your reviews today. <laughs> That's right. Anyway, it is. It is a very diverse committee. We have uh, two commissioners, Commissioner Whalen and Ann Campbell on there. Uh, we have a, a subcommittee, a mental health subcommittee that involves Commissioner Mojo and Commissioner Gross. Uh, we also, on the main committee, we have uh, Bill Berquist, the sheriff. Um, Matt Zero <coughs> is involved in it. Jail Administrator Julie Savat and, and her assistant, Justin Roberts, are very vital to this process. They are the ones that have to determine the working functions of the day-to-day -day operation and how it, how it moves through this. So they work very closely with the architect. Chief of Police Dave Ebinger is on it. Uh, Township uh, Officer Association, Gary Bergen, is on that, so they are represented. Uh, Moorhead City Councilman Mike Hewlett is on it. Uh, Social Services is on it. Pat Boyer, um, Rick Hoganson, and Les Steenerson, Citizens at Large, are, are on it. Uh, the County Attorney is on it. Um, James Miraja, Assistant County Attorney from Administration, is going to be working diligently with us. Uh, Lori and, and uh, um, I'll say Joe. Also now, uh, our maintenance supervisor is on the committee. Uh, it, Mike Redlinger has joined us as the city manager. There's just a lot of people involved in this, so we're really trying to take a broad view of this, and, and I think we're working on this. So what you did is you employed Klein McCarthy again, and Scott Fedick, who is uh, president, CEO, is, uh, both titles, or, a bit of everything. he's in charge anyway, uh, and is here today to present 
the findings and take us through the work that this committee has done, which I think has been an awful lot, and hopefully you will agree uh, at the end of this presentation. And I'm going to get out of the way and let uh, this one introduce Scott to you and, and uh, let you have a crack at it. Thank you. Do you want me to hand those out, or I do you, you got those? Yeah. <clears throat> well, what I want to do is go through uh, what uh, Brian is handing you. Here's a copy of the full presentation. Um, there's a lot of information to it, so it really is not only the presentation, but meant to serve as the bound report of, of our findings. So there's a lot of information in there. I certainly don't expect you to, uh, to read through every last bit of it. Um, I'm going to cover the first half of it, and then what you see at the, the back half of the presentation or this packet is really all of the options that we looked at. <clears throat> so, so there's a lot of text, but I'll go through this uh, in about 20, 25 minutes will be the goal. The first slide we've got is really a, a layout of the campus and the direction that when we first started from, this is what came from the committee, uh, really looking at the uh, expansion of the jail, uh, looking at the, the uh, gold box, looking at the gold box with the uh, 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 jail here, law enforcement in the existing building or new, um, some type of expansion there because it does not all fit in there. And then what doesn't fit by pushing these buildings tight together and keeping parking really was building a second phase of the jail to get everything built out. So, and then uh, part of the discussion was to replace the parking that gets lost by doing some sort of a parking structure. So that's really where we started, figuring that we need to address the expansions, but also the loss of the parking and get that, get that replaced. We looked at 17 total site options through the process. Um, and this just gives you a, a, a somewhat of a quick summary as far as keeping the jail and LEC co-located and on campus, we looked at four options there six different options involving a parking structure, um, not only size but location on the sites, um, nine different options looking at on-grade parking, ten keeping the jail and law enforcement together, seven we looked at splitting the jail and law enforcement if, where uh, that made sense. Um, we looked at different locations on the site, eleven different locations of the jail to the south of the existing jail and LEC, four of the jail to the north if we were to purchase properties. Um, we looked at eight different options that demolish the jail and LEC and build in that place, either ex future expansion or parking. Um, and we did look at also two different options, reviewing the uh, LEC moving uh, off campus. Um, and I'll show you that also. The options aren't, um, the, we didn't cover these in chronological order, so they didn't flow from option Option 1A, B, C. So we started, I think, with several option number ones and option number two and an option number three. And then as each meeting developed uh, those into different versions. Um, so that's what we'll go into today. Um, but basically, we're looking at the, we started with that parking structure, as I mentioned, um, and looking at two different locations. If we end up looking at it over here, um, we'd, we'd end up looking at 250 spaces with what we're replacing, uh, losing and replacing. That's the number that we wanted to get there. So that would be about a three-story parking structure. We also looked at, in option 1B, we also looked at a parking structure that was smaller in footprint south of the JDC. That ended up being five or six stories. So what we started looking at there was really, we're starting to use up a lot of valuable site for a parking structure. They're also very expensive. So things like this started to, to uh, lead us down the direction where somebody had just said, why aren't we looking at property acquisition? If parking is so expensive, can't we buy property, redevelop it, and put surface parking on there cheaper? And the answer is yes, you can. Um, so we looked at different directions. Um, we have the river to the west. We have, uh, we want to connect the jail to the existing tunnel system, which goes across here. So the jail wants to stay in this area and not down in an area like this. We don't want to cross 11th. So really the targeted areas that we discussed in the options were really north of the existing site. 
So we got into different things, uh, and you'll see the color boxes don't correspond to the LEC or the jail specifically. They really correspond to the phasing. So if you go into um, even option even option 1C, and we look at that, we start talking about the jail being built down here, uh, phase two, the LEC expansion, um, putting up a parking structure. So, you know, whether it's on that block or this block, those are the things that we started taking a, a look at through all of through all of these. So those are attached. If you want to see those in more detail, they're attached to the um, to the back of it. Um, we looked at things of splitting. Um, you know, here's two different options for the LEC and parking. So we're looking at a jail south of the existing facility and then splitting the LEC. Um, we looked at different options where we were stacking um, the jail and LEC, and you started looking at four-story uh, <coughs> buildings where if we're trying to avoid a parking structure, do we put parking in the basement? Do we put parking on the roof of buildings? Um, we don't really like law enforcement stacked up on top of the jail. It's better for the jail because, you know, the old plumbing adage, everything flows downhill. Um, so we don't like to put law enforcement or occupied spaces underneath the jail. So if we put them on top, they have a high volume of public participation and traffic. So then everybody that comes in has to take an elevator to get to them. So those are the, some of the things that we really start taking a look at. Also looked at vertical expansion of the jail. Back in 2009, that was one of the things that was, that was laid out. So that was a consideration. It's cheaper to expand the jail horizontally. So it's cheaper in construction, but it's also less operational cost with staff movement. So that's another thing that we, if we can control the staff operations of these facilities, that's a critical piece compared to the bricks and mortar. Um, so those are different things. This is one that we looked at where we took the LEC from the existing building and looked at a corner property over at the school and just to see how that would work, how far away um, is, it, is it acceptable to move the LEC? Um, this distance was really, was really at the edge of what people felt comfortable with, um, but also um, talked with the public and things, and that really wasn't seen as a favorable location with law enforcement right on the same campus as the school. Uh, we, you know, I mentioned before, we looked at the jail to the north. Um, then what we have to do is, is work around the jail and law enforcement to connect back up to the tunnel. So that made for a harder tunnel connection. But we did look at even on-grade connection of the jail and LEC. It led us to uh, option 1I um, is what we're recommending, and I'll come back to that one in more detail. Uh, but just to kind of wrap up the uh, different option reviews, you start to see that, that uh, as we're expanding all of this, a couple of the key features that we want to do is as the jail expands, or the LEC expands, we need to keep those facilities uh, occupied and operational. So we can't go in and just tear down the annex and make way for the jail construction. So we end up doing the jail in multiple pieces depending on where we're building it. So we have to, uh, in the recommended option, we're building the first part of it, tearing down the annex, building the second piece of it to get the full program. So those are, those are the pieces of, of what we've got in there. Again, I mentioned the parking structure uh, in the different options. We looked at different configurations of the parking structure, but you're looking at something, you know, five or six stories, depending on the footprint. It's not very uh, efficient or economical, or you're looking at something that, that's uh, flatter, uh, but more space. But really, the cost of a parking structure, when you're looking at it, if you start dealing with $25,000 of space, to enclose parking versus buying property and redeveloping it and looking at on-grade parking at maybe $3,000 of space, there's quite a difference in that. So that's what we wanted to look at. And then also it gives you more room to expand the buildings and come up with shapes and configurations and layouts that are more efficient. So this is what we looked at was the existing campus, looked at the two city blocks to the north of the campus and said, let's, des let's develop a master plan that will work regardless of which properties you get north of the campus and how long it takes you to get those. So we can work our designs around 
whichever properties are available, readily available, those that you may not be able to get or may take longer can be worked around. So that was a key part of this also. Looking at the uh, location for the new jail, uh, the best location in connecting with the tunnel system and keeping the jail facility away from the residential areas, um, decided not to put the jail north of the existing facility, but put it south. That keeps it centralized, keeps it close to the tunnel. We can make that connection, keeps it away from the residences, and also um, by keeping it centralized, uh, it's really kind of back of house. It's off of 11th. So that's where we talked about doing that. Talked about if we can get enough surface parking, let's not do a basement under it and deal with water issues. So let's just do the two-story uh, jail facility. And again, the two-story is the housing part is two stories and then some support. Non-inmate things can be on the second level. So construct that first um, and then hold it away south of the law enforcement center so that we can still connect to the tunnel, but keep it away from there so that the jail and law enforcement can stay in place. Um, so we'll do that. I'll cover that in the, in the uh, uh, expansion phases. The best place for the law enforcement then with everything being, uh, we want to keep as much parking as we possibly can close to family services. So we're looking at putting the law enforcement center to the north on uh, the new property acquisition sites. Um, we're flexible in which block it goes on. We're flexible in which side of the block it goes on. Again, working around any properties that you would need to. Um, the um, um, final direction, what we end up with is by the, when all five phases, and this can be more or less phases as you determine, but the five phases when completely built out, what we're looking at is this is about where your uh, law enforcement building is now. So we would build the jail to the south. Here's that 15 foot buffer uh, between that and the existing building. So we would build this part first. Um, second phase, we start tearing out and replacing uh, the programs that we need to get that where the annex is and start looking at different parking configurations. Again, just showing uh, spaces that can be green spaces. Um, after you get the, the uh, properties, you don't have to build everything out uh, for parking, so that's flexible. Uh, this is a one-story law enforcement with a drive-through garage. That can be two-story also. Um, so taking a look at that, putting a parking in front, buffering from the school across the street, and then revising the streets out here to get a little bit more uh, pedestrian friendly walkways. You start to see some of that being developed along here and across here so that when you are coming a longer distance from the parking, you're not crossing a bunch of main drive aisles and uh, trying to clean that up and make that safer for people visiting the buildings. That's everything built out. So phase one, uh, and what we're talking about approving today uh, is phases one through three. So looking at focusing on the jail, uh, building that first part of it with parking to the south, um, and again, looking at um, construction area that we're going to need for materials, lay down space of that nature, but this is a pretty reasonable expectation. Connecting it up to the tunnel, which goes across this direction, putting in some surface parking right away to make up for um, and soften the blow from what we're going to lose when the jail construction starts. Now whether that's on this block or this block or it runs north and south, that can be determined on your site acquisitions. Again, very flexible in what we're doing, but uh, this was the, one of the parking lots taken directly from the uh, full build out. So what we're trying to do is don't put a parking lot in that we're going to have to tear out in a future phase. So let's get it in the right spot. Wherever that is, uh, let's pick a location and get that laid out. Then we tear down the annex, uh, get all the inmates moved in here in phase two, tear down the annex, and then build what's remaining of the jail that's needed. That's the lobby, the program space, uh, the jail administration offices, um, the video visitation, all of those things, but all of the jail housing intake, that's all fully functional in the existing jail. That was important to get that going first. Um, so then that connects up. So that's phases one, two, and three. 
that gets you where you need to go. It gives you time by not building, uh, by not utilizing any of the existing jail for jail functions and remodeling it, uh, by not um, by not connecting up to it physically. We can leave that fully operational so that law enforcement remains in place until the county and city can work out um, the final program, what they need, where they should be, any agreements between the city and county. So it gives you time. We also had different options where we actually were, were doing the jail and law enforcement at the same time, but then we needed to tear down the existing jail and LEC for the future pieces of the jail. We didn't want to do that, so they can operate independently, give you that flexibility, um, whether that takes you uh, a, a month or six or, or years. Um, that gives you that flexibility. The building would need to come down at some point because what we've got planned is this is the inmate uh, corridor, and we want to put two additional future housing units right here. Um, and we, we don't want to try to go through the existing building and put those up here. So we will need that space eventually. We just don't need it in our first three phases. Phase four is looking at the, uh, the law enforcement center. Again, showing uh, we've had initial program meetings with the city and the county uh, programmed in um, a parking structure so they can park vehicles inside all their office functions, but also additional agencies such as highway patrol or probation uh, and programming those out. So um, looking at that footprint, that's a one-story footprint. Again, the buffer parking lot, so the building isn't right on top of the street. So now you can get a uh, focal point along 11th so that you get family services, courthouse, law enforcement, and then the jail tucked in behind. We also, uh, I showed you where we can put parking at the south and put the LEC into a two-story configuration and take a look at that. Again, saving more of your site for future expansion. So we tend to look at things more along the lines of a worst case scenario. This occupies the most physical site, so that's what we showed in this. Phase five, if you came in, you get all the, uh, all the properties, you turn other areas into green space until you need them for parking. And then if you wanted to, taking out the streets and cleaning that up, getting a little more pedestrian friendly, really creating that horseshoe around the campus um, with more, most of the uh, focus to the uh, 11th area. That's phase five. So again, four and five are future phases. They can be done as you, uh, as you get ready and develop those. The parking, if you did all of the build out, um, compared to the parking to what you have now versus what you'd have at that point, you'd gain 105 spaces to give you an idea, and that includes the uh, parking uh, down by the river and any enclosed law enforcement parking. So this is a gain. Again, if you decided you didn't need 105 spaces, you could keep this parking lot as green space or part of this as green space. So you have that flexibility to balance out just how much you want to build out and when you need it. So parking, uh, we have increased the parking. <clears throat> Site utilities, uh, with some that you saw, the street closures, um, we do need to move some sanitary sewer and we can work with the city on that. And then also the storm sewer is a little, little more problematic, but that can also be relocated and, and uh, look at looping some of those systems instead of some of those uh, dead ending onto the site. So that, um, that can be addressed relatively easily. Just a quick update on the engineering side of things. Since 2009, the power plant has done some uh, renovations and upgrades, uh, but the jail, the way we're expecting the uh, utilities to function is the new jail will connect to the power plant and be powered by that. We still need to add a, a 400 ton chiller still need electrical generator uh, for that and new electrical service. But the jail, because of the location of it, can be connected to the power plant. Um, what we'd recommend on the law enforcement is that's far enough away out of the loop system. We would recommend that functions on its own, um, own utility system so it's not connected up to the power plant. It functions uh, independently uh, with its new mechanical and electrical service. I have one question quickly. Sure. If that uh, law enforcement center was on the lot closer to the river, would it then be able to be connected to the loop? It could be connected to a loop if it was on either block. It just with the runs of it and the capacity of what the power plant can handle, 
if we connect it to the power plant, we would need to expand the power plant, and there isn't physical space to do that unless we fill in between the area, between the, exist the new jail mm -hmm. and the power plant, so we need to fill that in, okay. but it's certainly something that can be, we can look at the economy okay. of that and see which way, uh, price it out two different ways so you Thank have you. the option. Um, the law enforcement center, as I mentioned, can be on either block north of the, it could be north of the existing location, it can be north of the courthouse, um, either spot and take a look at that. The new building uh, designs would include energy efficient fixtures and there is a potential for power generation. If uh, we do, you saw there, we have some larger buildings, we have good roof space. If we wanted to look at solar panels and, and supplement or use those, uh, that is also possible. So uh, we're not ruling any of those things out um, so that they're capable of that. Just taking a quick look at the probable project cost of, uh, of the jail facility, since that's the part we're talking about now. We went back into the old estimate from 2009, and uh, this is just a summary of that spreadsheet. Um, we increased inflation is at 17% to get it from 2009 to today and then we increased it by 7.3% uh, to get it uh, to 24.7 to get it to the midpoint of construction assuming that this would bid um, December next year after the general election and then going out to the midpoint of construction. So that gives you an idea of that. So we're looking at a construction cost of a little over 24 million, soft cost of almost three for a total project cost of 27.5. Again, that's the first three phases of what we're looking at with the project. Doesn't include all the street closures or site utilities and relocation of those things. Um, but this is just a general idea based off of that last estimate and we compared it to a few of the other things that we're doing and it is running pretty consistently in, in that area. Um, so that's what's included in that to give you a general idea of what you're looking at. Um, next steps, um, we would continue uh, land acquisition and working on those so that you can determine uh, what is available and where the parking, like, parking lot might be uh, when the jail is constructed so that that's in place for employees and public. Um, begin the designing of the standalone jail facility south of the existing facility and um, and then have the the committee continue to look at the joint law enforcement center as far as programming and finalizing that program location and where that might be how that might go into it so final construction phasing we talked about the five different phases phases one through three is what we're looking at today um, again, bidding that in the winter of 2016, beginning of 2017, after the general construction so, or general election. Construction would start about May 2017, as soon as the ground is uh, thought out, and then get it completed uh, in the summer of 2019. Again, that's looking at uh, a little over two years because we need to do the jail in two phases so that the annex can stay operational until they move into the, the future jail and then we tear down the annex and do the second phase of that. So that lengthens it out a little bit. The LEC site work, um, phases four and five can certainly be done at the same time. Mm -hmm. There may be some economy and scale of doing that with the same contractors bidding the same work. It also may make things, bid packages larger um, so that maybe some of the smaller local people would have a more difficult time. So uh, my suggestion would be to determine whether you wanted to do construction management services or general construction, take a look at some of the pricing as, as this is developed and take a look at where the economy really uh, makes sense for you. But certainly the way everything is set up in the master plan, the LEC is separate from the jail to give you that flexibility now and in the future. So you've got time to take things uh, in smaller steps if you like to. That's what I have. Thank you, Scott. Questions for Scott? Yeah, uh, Mr. Um, can you go back to the slide site option one I this this one? Sure. Um, Let's get the parking on there. It's uh, uh, get the get this one. Want that one? Okay. <clears throat> So as we as we worked as a committee, this um, this was kind of the final site option, and, and I think the the jail um, 
the nice thing about the jail is it doesn't move a lot right now. I'm okay. Uh, compared to its current location and it's, uh, there's no disruption to housing markets or, or how, you know, housing neighborhoods or things like that because it's, it's kind of staying somewhat where it's at now. Um, I know we've had this joint committee, separate committee that's been working both with the school district, the county, and the city on different capital projects and explaining them. And I know one of the concerns amongst uh, um, school district was on 11th Street there, um, anything north of 9th Avenue that we're looking at in terms of building was th that there would be a buffer between 11th Street and a, a new LEC. And as you can see in either one of these options up there, if you maybe you want to point to that for me. Sure. Yeah. So that's that's okay. one design, and that's this is actually another one that that our committee is looking closely at. If you want to point <coughs> that again, Scott. Yes, sir, yeah. And that that's uh, a potential two-story facility as opposed to the one uh, bringing it a little bit closer and facing south towards our campus. But the important thing there is that we are maintaining a buffer. Um, area two between the school. Uh, if you look closely at it, we would that building right now would fairly line up with our current campus here with our courthouse, so that there's there's that buffer difference. And then the other part that the school district was concerned about was visibility amongst the children in the school from being able to see inmates. And obviously, where the jail is right now, there would be no visibility to them towards that. And then also, we'd, we'd still be able to use the tunnel. Uh, of course, everything here would, would close um, both 8th and 9th avenues. And everything we need to emphasize right now that everything north of 9th Avenue is conceptual right now um, until we go through the acquisition process and see what we have to work with. We'll, we'll have to design accordingly for, for that. And of course, we still have to enter into a lot more discussions with the city regarding a joint law enforcement center. But, um, this, as Scott mentioned, there was 17 different sites, uh, and there was a lot of work done by that committee. And you know, I think at this point, I want to thank all of them too for being part of it. it certainly, is an expensive project, but uh, it's one that's needed. Any other comments? Well, I guess I'd just like to compliment on this. It's a very good report. I mean, I, we hear about the jail and, you know, what's going on. You hear from the committee, you know, and you just hear a few items, you know, but now we really know what, what we're looking at, you know, and it's a very good report and appreciate this. Thank you. Okay. Again, thanks to uh, the committee members. We. Uh, We've come a long way in actually a fairly short time. It's been a significant, it is a significant project. It's, uh, everybody on the committee has taken their work seriously. It's an important issue for the citizens in Clay County. And uh, uh, we, we want to thank the Moorhead City Council, the township, uh, our citizens at large, and our staff for all the work that they've done. And there's a lot more work yet to be done, but uh, we're moving in the right direction, so. With that, uh, I guess I quickly, oh, if sure. you may, if you want to compliment you as well on the, the collaboration that you've done. Uh, because three of the commissioners up here don't serve on that committee, it's great to have presentations like this to uh, bring us up to speed. And I, I think maybe in the future, the more we can involve the remaining commissioners, I think the better it will be to to help uh, collaborate on this this project. And I know there are public meeting rules, but the more we can include the rest of us, the better. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Brian. The next uh, item is authorization authorization to execute design contract with Clay McCarthy Architects for Correctional Facility. Well, Mr. Chair, and I think that is uh, that is an awfully good segue into this next project. I, I think what uh, Mr. Fedick is pointed out here is uh, the work that has been invested in this, but the decision is yours. And what the committee is bringing to you through Mr. Fedick today is a recommendation to move forward with uh, design of a county jail. And that, uh, that is a costly uh, venture. Um, 
the, and I'll just go back to the goal of this committee, was to suggest a design for a new correctional facility which may include a law enforcement center connected or separated, determine a construction timeline, and guide operational functionality, adult mental health, education, reentry, and programming. And I think, I think, it's it, my opinion, I think the committee has, has really gone down that right track with that, but we're at a, at a crossroads here today and um, I think the recommendation is to do, go forward from the committee through, through the architect to go forward with the design of this. And that means employing the, writing a new contract with the art, architect for that design of the facility. Now, I have been in negotiation with him through the committee members, uh, your, your two commissioners. We met last night, um, or at the end of the day, I should say. And we have looked through the contract. I think Jenny has reviewed the contract. Uh, she hasn't indicated to me that, that there was anything that is not in order. She I might have a couple comments. OK. Uh, all I wanted to point out was that I had gone through the contract. And it, it for most uh, purposes, is very uh, normal and usual and is very much within uh, expectations for a project like this. Um, it, it proposes, uh, of course, a, a, I don't want to call it a fee schedule, but certainly a, a payment for services based upon a percentage of the cost of the work. Uh, and that's laid out in Article 6. Um, and, and we've negotiated that accordingly. There's also additional services in Article 4 uh, that the county would also be responsible for based upon uh, hourly rates and um, reimbursable expenses which are laid out in exhibits B and C, um, things like uh, copy costs, mileage, etc. and then hourly rates for different uh, additional services um, above and beyond the percentage, the fee percentage that is laid out based on the, the total cost of the project. The contract um, very much uh, assumes or implies that the county would also be hiring a construction manager. Um, and there, there are some um, variables there we have not yet to decide. But um, I think the, the committee is, is still talking about what we want to do there. But we, we do need that oversight as well, that other level of oversight so really what the what the county through this contract uh, is doing is contracting for that scope of the project one through three as scott talked about and uh, when you look at what the county's responsibilities are underneath the project again uh, nothing surprising um, nothing that stuck out as being unusual or unreasonable but uh, I did want to point out the three different um, types of costs that the county could incur. Construction management costs, which would be separate from this agreement, the fee percentage based on the cost of the project, and then the additional services that are charged at hourly rates and reimbursable expenses. So. And, and Mr. Chair, I may add the percentage is a 7% uh, fee, which is somewhat normal, uh, I say somewhat, it may vary a little bit, and the firm was uh, generous in granting us $150,000 credit towards that fee for past services rendered, which really helps us out in, in moving forward. So um, with that, we'd like you to consider approving the, uh, the contract with uh, KMA. Kevin. Mr. Chair and board members, I think um, um, this is this will be a milestone today in what we're going to do, and I think it's only important that we also uh, remind everybody why we're doing this. And when you take a look at our current jail, um, its age, it's the oldest in the, in the state of Minnesota, I think, the oldest in operation. That in itself isn't reason to not use it, uh, however, it's also the, the only linear style jail, I think, left, Julie. Um, in today's day and age, that becomes a safety issue, not only 
not only for our staff, but the inmates themselves. We were operating in a really a poor setting there. Um, the Department of Corrections has put us on notice on several occasions that our facility is not meeting standards and the, um, the potential to happen, say like what happened in Chis Chisago County with uh, forcing their jail to go to a 90-day facility would be um, extremely devastating uh, from our standpoint in terms of, of uh, cost. Um, and as we all know, just this month alone, we are, we are shipping out in excess of 40 inmates a day to other facilities. Um, and, you know, it's for these reasons, and you may want to uh, add others yourselves, but um, the time is now to move forward uh, with the design of this new jail. And uh, I would so move that we do so. So your motion is to approve the Yes, and Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I do, um, Jenny, this, you've heard me ask this and have concerns about this before. Mm -hmm. I just wanna make sure that what we're doing here uh, will also um, qualify us for any future um, reimbursement on any type of legislation or bond issues from the state of Minnesota. So I, you know, I, that's key to what we're, we could be doing here, okay. so. And it's all about how that bonding is written. Okay. Um, the specific wording that's used uh, when it's taken to the general election. Okay, but I, I would like, Mr. Chairman, my, my motion uh, is, is to move forward. Um, and I, I also, it's the intent that what we're doing here, all of these costs with this design would also be subject to, to be reimbursement um, on any um, potential, uh, whether, whether it be a bond or whether it be uh, future sales tax uh, options available to pay for this facility, that, that these, the funds of the design would also be part of that. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Oh, I think after listening to this, it's, I feel it's really important that we do have someone in charge of this thing. You know, it's very, I mean, looking at this report is very, it's very good. You know, we need someone to do that for us, for this county, and I second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All the same sign, motion carries. Mr. Chairman, can I make one other comment too? And I, this goes to, the, I, I think that another step in this that, that the board will have to do fairly soon will be uh, what, what Scott talked about in terms of, and Jenny alluded to in this process is, is at some point we're gonna have to determine who's going to manage this project. And, and I think, um, you know, I think our committee's talked about it, we talked about it, and I, you know, at some point, hopefully we're gonna be able to bring to you fairly soon the you know something re regarding a construction manager uh, type of deal or, or how we're going to handle that but that's going to be uh, a critical component to this so absolutely thank you thanks Scott thank you Mr. Mr. Chair if I may follow up uh, with one additional motion and it, it's it's um, it's in addition to the contract with the architect uh, we had contracted for a schematic design layout for the campus. And then the city went ahead and said any work that is to be done uh, would be shared 50-50 of the costs. And we do need to continue forward with a schematic for the law enforcement. And I know what the city passed was up to $15,000, I believe, and to share that cost. So uh, I guess I would ask the board to also pass a motion that they would support continuing the schematic design of the law enforcement center. <coughs> that is not in the design stage yet. We are moving to the design stage of that, but there will be some future work that needs to be continued with that. Uh, if you want to put a $15,000 limit on it, that would be fine. Or if you want to just pass a motion to continue that work, whatever your Mr. preference Chair, is. So move as Brian has suggested without a limit at this time. We have a motion, do we have a second? Well, I'll, I'll second it. I, I, 
you know, I, I think it's, um, I don't, if it exceeds, you know, the, uh, the 30,000, then, then, you know, the council, the city council's only gone up that far. So I, you know, so I, I hopefully once we reach that, it would be brought back to this board before we would go further. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All the same sign, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, thank you. Okay, Brian, you got to uh, discuss discussion of joint bonding bill for correctional facility. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, one additional item in regards to the, the whole financing and planning of this uh, of this jail, you are all aware that last legislative session that we worked in conjunction with Chisago County um, on a bill to uh, seek bonding dollars. And Chisago County has reached out to us again and said they are continuing their efforts on this and they uh, have employed the services of a, of a lobbyist to help secure uh, dollars and uh, what they have done is they've entered into a contract of $25,000 to uh, for services until December of this year, I believe. And they have reached out to us and uh, we have discussed it in committee somewhat um, as to whether this is a good idea or not. And, and I know both you and Commissioner Campbell have, um, you know, have uh, some big feelings and, and that's why we're bringing it to the board today too. Well, we certainly bring it to the board anyway, but, but <laughs> do you want to share those costs with them? And do you want to share the, the services of a, a lobbyist, I guess is the question for the board. So we'd be paying 12500 for the yeah. services that Chisago has contracted for. And I, and, and I think you've had some discussions with our area legislators and they think it's a positive move and hopefully worthwhile. So, you know, I think the thing with uh, these issues are uh, if it works, it was a good idea. If it doesn't, then maybe it wasn't such a good idea. But uh, I guess I, I, I support. Uh, we, we've, we've, Chisago has done a lot of work on this and they've been a good partner in trying to accomplish getting bonding money for both their project and ours and so I I, I would support uh, paying that twelve thousand five hundred dollars to Chisago. And the, and the other item that was pointed out very strongly to me was the fact that the lobbyist is currently working on this and he feels that it's very important that those contacts are made right now. Right. Not not after the first of the year when the legislative session is in, in I think place. Th this is a time when people are trying to sell their bond. Well, that, that's exactly for, right. Uh, yeah. For the legislature, so. Frank. Well, I spoke to Senator Eakin too. You know, I asked, what can we do, you know, and stuff like that, you know, and it's just, well, we've got to contact legislators, you know. I mean, our local legislators are fully supporting this. Yes. You know, but that's not enough to pass no, the bond bill. No. So we need the rest of them, and I think that's where the importance of this, uh, Lobby. That's where it all comes in. I mean, unless we're going to go out there and lobby for it, you know, it's just. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't think we have that uh, capability. I mean, we probably do. I mean, but uh, well, we'd have uh, to spend to a lot done. of time in St. Paul, and that's that would right. cost it us more needs than twelve thousand dollars. Yeah, it needs to be done. Well, I I agree with what Commissioner Gross just said. I, you know, I, at some point in time, um, when this goes before the bonding committee, it, it's probably a significant line item where, where we may have to. At locally go testify to uh, give support for why we want it but um, it, it's the outreach that's going to need to go to all the other legislatures in the state on this issue it's going to be um, something that's going to require abilities outside of what we have here in Clay County so you're kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't in this deal but <laughs> Okay, any other comments? I guess I, I feel that if there's a potential for millions of dollars to save taxpayers in Clay County by spending a minimal amount to sell our project, we should be advocating for this project whether or not we decide to go forward on, on this. But I, I think it is an important step in the uh, advocating for it with Chisago County. 
for the board's wishes. I'll make a motion to move ahead with this contact. I mean, working with Chicago Town. I'll second that. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Carry none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion Thank carries. You. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Brian. Okay, we'll take a five minute break and be right back. Next item on our agenda is County Engineer David Overbow. <laughs> Approval of property demo quotes is first on your list, Dave. All right, we've been asked to take care of the um, pre existing flood buyout home. It's in the very south west corner of Clay County. Uh, one of the homes, or the main home was moved out of this property. Uh, there's some debris down there as well as a well and septic. And what, what we did is we uh, worked jointly together with uh, CH2M Hill, put together some specifications and some plan drawings. Um, we solicited some quotes for some local contractors that are familiar with this type of work. And the bids came in last Friday pretty favorable. Um, according to um, uh, our, some of the pre-existing projects we've worked on, we were estimating maybe as high as $30,000 for uh, removal of the existing concrete, um, filling the hole, removing the septic well, and doing some cleanup and some seating work out there. Uh, the low bid, or the low quote, I guess, that we got was $23,875 by American Enterprises. And I've had several conversations with this contractor. He's familiar with the work. He's got equipment uh, that should easily handle it. And I think it's like a maybe a day or two days at the most project. Okay, questions? I move approval of the uh, full contract by American Enterprises. Second. And that's, that would be reimbursed by the division authority. Correct. Motion and a second uh, to approve the property demo quote. Any further discussion? I, I uh, did not support us looking for bids. I'm still of the, the thought and belief that uh, the property owner should pay for their own demolition, so I will not be supporting this. Okay, any other uh, comments? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, Dave, approval of gravel crushing quotes. Yeah, we we solicited some quotes to do some a little a little larger pile that we have had done in the past uh, at our Felton County pit. Uh, this is uh, kind of just south east of the Felton area. Uh, the county has been mining gravel and allowing gravel to be sold to the townships in this pit for many 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 years. Uh, what we did is we put together a quote. Uh, that would kind of fit within our maintenance budget for graveling, which we do have approved annually. And um, we're looking at around the, between the 20 and 30,000 yard range, I guess, that we felt, felt we could afford. And the low bid that we got for 25,000 cubic yards was Turner Sand and Gravel. Uh, currently, this company does work in our county pit, uh, crushes gravel for the county and also for the townships. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to put up a little larger pile. We can use that for our maintenance needs as well as we might use that next year for our, 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 uh, our maintenance graveling on our roadways. So we wouldn't have to do a separate crush there next year. It's gonna give us a little bit more flexibility on how we do work in the pit and a little more control on uh, where we go next. Uh, mm -hmm. We're looking at also maybe doing another contract to pull material out of the water. It's been a few years since we've done that. Uh, being what happened was there was some additional gravels and some piles from before we got the, the actual land to the county. We've been cleaning up areas like that and now we're probably gonna be going back down to the water. So next year we'll probably be doing a, a pretty sizable contract to pull water uh, uh, material out of the water and continue mining that way. Okay. What's the life of that pit? Do you know what? Well, the last time we did any borings was probably maybe <coughs> 15 years ago and I think it goes down almost 100 feet. Uh, the only kind of uh, the situation, and, and I think we'll probably talk more at our highway tracking committee meeting, is uh, the quality of gravel there is more it's more geared for concrete quality. Mm -hmm. I think the B bar B that's just a little south of us, that's where most of their material goes. Uh, it's it's getting harder to make class five out of this pit, uh, but we're we're still doing it. At at some time, that might be the discussion of 
do we try to trade some of this material to somebody else so that we can get gravel, you know, uh, more of a road gravel quality versus mm -hmm. the concrete quality. So okay. it's real clean in this area, but uh, I would say at least maybe 20 to 50 years, very conservatively, depending on how you use the pit. Uh, it's a pretty big footprint. We're not allowed to expand any horizontal, just straight down, but it, right. there's 70 to 90 feet of gravel okay. up there. All right, good. Okay, one of the board's wishes. I'll move to approve the Turner Sand and Gravel quote. Second. Is there something, I mean, What's the cost? I mean, okay, uh, it's ninety thousand dollars. That's going to be the cost to the county is ninety thousand uh, dollars. We had a certain dollar amount we wanted to back into, so what we did is we told them how much our our budget was, and they had to provide us what the quantity of gravel that they would crush for that. Okay. So that's why it's actually a little backwards. Yeah, I'm glad, All right. I'm glad you mentioned that. But uh, our threshold of dollars was ninety thousand. We're getting the most yards. For our money, for yeah. money. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I understand. We don't normally do it that way, but we wanted to stay within a number. We didn't, you know, we didn't want to go above that. We thought maybe that was a way uh, to try to look at it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Does does is that twenty five thousand kind of what you were anticipating getting? <clears throat> there's there's uh, yep, it's right in the right in the range. I was hoping maybe get a little more, but as you can see, the the other quotes were right in that range. So. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah, but I'm wondering if it's what you what you were yep. expecting. Yeah, they were telling us between two and three dollars a yard, but like I said, there was there's some mobilization costs in there and just a little bit of a little bit more cleanup work in this area that we're working in this pit. So, so this is well over three dollars a yard. Yep. Yeah, a little bit uh, when you take into account all them things, I guess equipment. I was hoping we get a mobilize bit. equipment. Uh, thank you. Any other comments? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same same motion carries. Request for salary adjustment for diesel mechanic. Yeah, we had a retirement within our uh, mechanic area, our shop area. Um, our existing diesel mechanic was promoted to shop foreman, and we um, held our interviews. We uh, we advertised uh, through the the radio and it generated actually some you know some some inter some applications and things. And I think you know down the road that is going to be a, a good way to look at getting candidates. Um, but we we held our interviews. We had. Three really good applicants uh, with, a, with a lot of relevant experience. Uh, the one candidate uh, was pretty unanimously the, the most qualified and the most experienced directly in the area of repairing heavy equipment. And not only that, but working kind of independently. Uh, this individual that I'd like to uh, make an offer to has been working independently for almost over 20 years. Uh, he spent quite a bit of time with a Caterpillar, with actually two Caterpillar dealers, and he's currently got 15 years working on air compressors and large commercial equipment uh, where he works all by himself. He orders his own parts, he makes his own repairs, and he schedules his own time accordingly. Uh, like I said, uh, he's been working well over 25 years in our area, and I think the department heads are allowed to hire on step one, two, or three. Um, He's going to take a real sizable pay cut, even if we do. Um, if I'm allowed to hire him at step five, which, which I would recommend to him, um, it's about a $16 an hour pay cut. But um, there's some very attractive things, I think, working with Clay County. He's going to be home every night. And uh, our summer hours are four 10 hour days, uh, which I think is pretty attractive. Our, our benefit package uh, is attractive to him as well. And I guess I, I would like to get permission to bring him in at step five. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's too far over on the grid based on his 25 plus years of experience. So move. Okay. Dan, did you have any more you wanted to add? Um, like I said, I, I think based on his years of experience, I think it's, it seems to be equitable. Uh, it shouldn't cause any trouble with the existing mechanic. Our existing mechanic was quite a bit further on the line before he was promoted. So mm -hmm. uh, to me, it seems, it seems fair. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second the request. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same, same. Motion carries. Approval of MnDOT agreement and resolution for conflict warning signs. Yeah, we've already got one of these. Well, prior to this summer, we had one of these in existence. It was uh, on Highway 75 and County Road 2 by Comstock. Um, I think they're very good. I think what, what it does, it allows crossing traffic to see if someone's coming into uh, the footprint of the intersection itself. Uh, MnDOT has paid for all the materials, 
and prior to today, they've been paying for the power even down on the one on County Road 2. Uh, it's pretty standard when you work with the state that the counties or local government units do pay for the, the power, providing the power. Um, they did get a Tiger grant to provide a second uh, system. It's on our County Road 18 and Highway 75, just north of Moorhead. Uh, it, it's, it's up, it looks really good. The technology is just a little bit different and I like how they change things. Um, but there again, uh, they have asked if we'd be willing to be a cooperative partner in this to provide the power on both intersections. Um, and that's why there is an agreement. And then there's also a resolution um, showing our support. And uh, I guess I think it's good for our residents, especially up in that uh, American Crystal Sugar area. There's a lot of traffic up there. And if it warns somebody, uh, there's been some changes up there. The state added a turn lane on 75, and we've added some turn lanes on our County Road 18 on the east, east leg of the intersection. So if it uh, brings a little more attention to oncoming traffic, hope it saves in life or an accident. I think it's important to note that the cost that the county is going to incur is very minimal uh, to prevent any possible life, loss of life with an accident. Uh, because of that, I will move to approve the MnDOT agreement and resolution for the signs. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Dave. Right, thank you. I did just want to note that I believe today Highway 52 should be open. Good. It was striped yesterday, and then they uh, let the paint dry, and I think the signs were pulled today. So Great. I know there would be a lot of happy people down there. Good to there. hear. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, uh, uh, agenda additions, uh, discussion, procurement process. Rhonda? Uh, Good morning. Good morning. Good Thank morning. you for the additions. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> are we going to take the second one first? Are the rest yours? Yes, the rest are mine. Yes. Okay. So, um, if we could start with the second um, addition to the agenda, and it looks like you all got the information in a packet. Um, Kathy and I are here to talk with you about the, um, our state's reprocurement process for the managed care organizations in Minnesota. So, um, and I think the resolution is in your packet. It would be the, the second, second one in your packet. Mm -hmm. um, so just to give some background, in June, we were here and requested a board resolution um, in regards to the recommended managed care organizations to serve Clay County. So um, earlier this year, the Department of Human Services issued a request for proposal in all 87 counties two health plans to respond to serving medical assistance and Minnesota care recipients in our state. So they did it statewide. As a part of that process, all the counties had a role in that, and we had a team of people who reviewed portions of the RFP responses and provided information back to DHS about our recommendations. And that's when we came to the board and asked for your support in doing a resolution supporting the existing managed health care plans that we had, which were Blue Plus, Medica, and UCARE. The fourth responder for our county was Health Partners. At that point, we were not recommending adding another health care plan in our county. We were recommending the existing three uh, remain. So that resolution was sent to the Department of Human Services. They considered that along with a multitude of factors and made the decision that the two managed care plans that they would invite to enter into negotiations for our county would be Blue Plus and Health Partners. So therefore eliminating Medica and UCARE in our county. We have um, roughly around uh, 3,800 people on Medica, close to 4,000 and about 1,200 people on UCARE. So what that would mean is in the open enrollment process, which would be coming up in October, all of those folks would be getting a notice from DHS that they would have to switch health plans, that they would have to now choose between Blue Plus and Health Partners 
um, which would then be effective January of 2016. Um, we got a letter, um, we got notification of the department's decision on um, July 28th, and, um, and then a subsequent letter came out last week on the 7th uh, indicating what counties could do if they disagreed with the department's decision about the health plans in their county. Um, because of, and, and they wanted a response from us by this coming Friday. So because of that, and the fact that we only have this <coughs> board meeting, um, we have met, we had um, some conversations with Ottertail County as well, have been kind of hearing what's happening around the state. There's a lot of questions that remain unanswered for us. We're not really sure, um, you know, service-wise what this would mean for our, you know, over 4,000 recipients in our county. We're not really sure what it would mean for our county contracts with the health plans, what it would mean for our providers. So based on um, statute, the counties, the county boards can request a reconsideration. And so we're here to recommend a resolution requesting a reconsideration at this point until such time that we can gather more information. It, it may be just fine and it may be just fine for our recipients, um, but we have a lot of information that we don't have at this point. Okay, Questions? Jenny. So in talking to our neighboring counties, is this uh, an action that the majority of them are, are doing because there are so many questions left unanswered? We only know about Otter Tail. We, we don't know what Becker and Wilkin will be doing, um, but we did have conversations with the Otter Tail and they are also bringing this forth to their board today just to meet that deadline. You know, the, the health partners, we had that about 15 to 20 years ago, somewhere around that time frame. And they were with our county for a very short time. So now that they're, um, the contract would be with health partners, we have no idea what their rates of reimbursement would be. So it could be a, a big implication for the county. Those are the unknowns. And those are, that's the information that we really need to get to make a, an appropriate decision. Mr. Chair. If I could talk about the reconsideration process itself. It is a uh, three-person mediation panel that we would go to, um, and then they would offer, they would hear from all the sides involved, and they would offer a recommendation to DHS, and DHS would maintain the final decision. Mm -hmm. uh, but it would be a good opportunity for information gathering and maybe to help all the partners involved understand the changes or what might need to happen. So um, it's not a litigation type of uh, situation. It's not, it doesn't have to even be a contentious kind of situation. And I think it's presented very appropriately, appropriately here as a fact finding opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wayne? Mr. Chair, I move the proposed resolution. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, the rest is yours. I guess so. Approval of agreement with Clay County Collaborative for Public Health to receive 5000 to support physical and mental health needs. And that one is an ongoing. We just missed the deadline for the consent. Normally you approve those with the consent agenda, but the collaborative uh, routinely supports our follow along program, which is a child find program for the physical and mental health of the children and families that we offer a um, service. And this is this has been ongoing for many years, so this is just approval of that contract for the collaborative to provide that funding for public health to continue that follow-along program. I'll move to approve the request. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Carrying none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign, motion carries. <coughs> Approval of service agreement with Southeast Community Service Center for payment for detox services. And, and that technically was for the 18th, um, but I certainly can, this is that ongoing contract for detox services, um, and they have been paying for the, the North Dakota clients, um, which has been a large number of our um, clients in detox. So, uh, you know, if you so approve, um, approve that today, that's fine, and then we can take it off for the 18th. It's a two-year period. Um, so that the Southeast, and they adjust, 
when they when when they went over the amount last contract period, they did provide the funding for those clients. So they're very uh, very good organization to work with. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All the same sign. Motion carries. Thanks, Kathy. Okay, thank you. Okay. Committee reports. Frank. Um Tuesday after meeting with Highway Tracking and um a couple of items we discussed with us, which we already covered today, stockpile of the gravel, uh, combining jobs. Uh, they're looking at combining a job with the driver for solid waste and with the highway department. Uh, we also had further discussion on the building for the Holly, Holly area. Um, uh, that night we went to, um, or that afternoon we went to the police dinner put on by the police departments of the different communities. Tuesday night I went to Dilwood Unite uh, function. Last night I went to Hagen Township to discuss some situations there, see how their highway maintenance is going and stuff like that. So that's what I did. Thank you. Wayne. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On Wednesday, August 5th, the Ward Planning Commission general business, then we recommended to the City Council that it amend various sections of the Moored City Code. Recommended again to the Council that it grant a conditional use permit for a resident at 409 Wall Street Avenue North. Recommended again that it approve a final plat at Horizon Shores, 9th edition. And then we tabled a request for a preliminary plat at Johnson Farms, 4th edition. On Friday, August 7th, for Lake Agassiz Regional Library, at an executive meeting of the Northern Lakes Library Council to begin going over the process for the audit. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Jenny? Last week, I also attended the Night to Unite kickoff with all of the area law enforcement agencies. I think it's a great uh, community collaborative effort to um, bring about the awareness. <clears throat> I that evening went to Holly Township. I had uh, been, it had been asked of me to go out there because the um, solid waste was uh, looking for a permit um, in regards to the yard compost recycling that was out there. And there's a lot of valid concerns by residents. Uh, the um, request did pass. However, um, they're asking when the lease comes to us that there are some parameters that they had asked be included, um, that we make sure that, that they are included in that lease before we approve it. Commissioner Campbell and I uh, and uh, Mr. Berg were also at the Community Facilities Task Force planning meeting on Thursday. Uh, and a lot of developments are happening with our projects and with the uh, school projects as well. And uh, I think th the biggest thing that will come out of that is um, that there is a lot of dialogue between the different entities as to being sensitive to how we tax our citizens. There are great um, facilities that we're planning for, and um, I think the county's uh, being really sensitive about how, how we um, financially um, build our, our plans, I guess. Is that the best way to, mm -hmm. to say that? That was it. Is that it, Jenny? Yep. Thank you. Kevin. Okay, I had um, also had the highway tracking meeting. I covered most of it. Uh, uh, we did act on the belt and pit issue today. Um, the Holly Shop relocation has, is ongoing and um, there was also some discussion about potentially moving that another four miles now. So we're looking at that um, as another potential option. Um, the, um, we discussed the Yule and Maintenance District a little bit and um, uh, we did talk about uh, prioritization of um, some CASA funds um, that we have some, because of some good good bids, we have a couple of projects that we might look at moving up. And uh, one of them is um, potentially the Wall Street Mill and Overlay and another one would be CASA 6. Good. 
And so we've, we've asked uh, our engineers to um, bring us a recommendation on that pretty soon to see if we can move one of those projects up um, with the most cost savings involved to do. Um, then also, um, Jenny mentioned we had the facilities. Oh, I did, I did want to say one other thing too. Uh, in the highway tracking committee, we got a report and, um, and I've asked Dave to bring this to us in, in the near future, but on the impacts that the five-year bonding bill did for us in terms of by um, escalating those projects and bonding for it, what kind of savings did we see over that period of time? And, and uh, I'm not going to rain on Dave's parade and I'm going to let him give the good news, but uh, it appears that we've even saved significantly more by advancing those projects than we thought before. And um, Dave's got a really nice report here, and I hope he can get it to the rest of you and let, it, let him report on that. Um, and then the facilities task force, as um, Jenny mentioned, um, we did discuss all the different projects, and we talked about several things from the county standpoint that are ongoing. Um, Prairie Lakes, uh, I had a budget meeting uh, last, last Friday, and uh, as I mentioned to you, um, they had had some significant expenditures over revenues, let's say, for 2015. And so in preparation of the 2016 budget, it was important that we get that in line. And we've done that, I think, and that's going to be brought before the Prairie Waste uh, Board, um, Prairie Lakes Municipal Solid Waste Board the end of this month and then uh, we'll be uh, if, as you all know that there's planned for a joint all five county board meeting uh, scheduled for 3:30 on October 5th in Perm um, and that more will come out on that it will be public meetings Jenny that uh, and there we'll give a, a really up, update on the facility the new burner uh, it's revenues and expenditures and so on and so forth. Yesterday, um, we uh, spent a significant portion of the day going through the veteran service officer interviews, and um, we interviewed six very qualified candidates, and um, we did come to a consensus on one and and. Uh, well, of course, I think we'll want to wait till we know that that person has accepted before we, we talk about it anymore. But uh, hopefully, we'll be able to hire somebody very soon. That's all I have. Mr. Thank Kerr. you. That's what I had yesterday to uh, the uh, veteran service officer interviews, and uh, I think we did have good candidates. Uh, I think there were 52 applicants, so that mm -hmm. was pretty positive for that position. So, Jeez. And, uh, and so. Hopefully all will end well there, and uh, that's it for me. Brian, what do you have for us? Well, <clears throat> I guess most things have been covered. <coughs> Highway tracking, night to unite. Uh, we've had some discussion with public health in regards to, uh, to uh, the detox center, and we'll continue those discussions. Um, had a di diversion administrative uh, advisory meeting. Uh, I sat in on the management team meeting for a few minutes. Uh, had several discussions with uh, Scott Fettig from KMA, um, and he presented here to this morning, and, and uh, so you're well versed on that. Um, had some discussions with Joe Olson. Uh, community task force, facility task force has already been discussed. A uh, social service budget review went over that. We had the BSO interviews yesterday, and uh, I'll do a little follow up on that and bring a, uh, a recommendation to you folks um, because that is an appointment by the board, a four year uh, appointment. And uh, uh, I guess. Uh, 
Last night, we met with uh, KMA again in regards to tying up some loose ends on the contract and uh, presentation. And I think that's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Jenny, anything? I don't. Thank no. you. Vicki? Okay, we have a closed session now. We have to do our yearly evaluation of Move to the close for evaluation. Second. Motion and a second to close. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries.